Okay, thanks. No, but, uh, uh, Wait. So I think that the two different profiles that you see here, me uh, coming, my background is in law. Hola. I'm a lawyer. I'm a also uh, had some um, uh, master degrees in economics and also in uh, management of cultural institutions. And um, with me, I have an artist. Uh, he's an artist and he's been managing the sound lab. Um, and this is kind of like the um, type of um, way that we intend uh, to have at Laboral. We work from different, very di different disciplines. We're only eight years old. Uh, as uh, Bjorn has said, we're a huge institution. When we talk about something that is physical, when we talk about something that is uh, economics, we're very small. Uh, we're going to talk about economics and we're, go we're going to talk about uh, figures also. Uh, we've talked about money a little bit in this uh, second panel, but in fact, we're very transparent. We want to tell you exactly what it took for us to put together a sound up and what we were able to do with that little money. And um, um, well, uh, Laboral, as I said, uh, was born in 2007, in March, and we're a 21st century art centre. Not only an art centre, but we have a second last name, as uh, Spanish people do, we, uh, Lucia Garcia Rodriguez. So we have a second last name, which is uh, Creación Industrial. It's a romantic way to refer to other type of uh, creation not only creative industries, but also different types of creating. So we're, um, we're located in the north of Spain, we're in the periphery, that means that we're not in Madrid, we're not in the big uh, cities, and uh, even though um, in Spain we had this, um, uh, in the last uh, 20 years, every single region, every single um, state kind of uh, said, uh, as such, uh, wanted to have an art centre, a contemporary art centre. They had a great idea, it was uh, to have a singular space, which was not an art centre, a contemporary art centre, but a centre where we could experiment with art. And that's what we intend with every single thing that we do in, in Laboral. So, um, yeah, that's what we are. We're in between art, science, technology, society, creative industries. And uh, we intend to work in a different way. So uh, we're very uh, different profiles. And uh, we want to produce and distribute and communicate contemporary culture. Um, well, uh, when we thought of implementing a sound lab, uh, we already have a, um, a platform, which we call Plataforma Cero. And um, this uh, already uh, has a Fab Lab, which is very trendy at the moment. Everyone wants to have a Fab Lab. We do have a Fab Lab. We have an AV Lab. We uh, had um, spaces for production, for displays of uh, dif very uh, different uh, performing uh, arts, uh, installations, everything. Uh, and we wanted also to add something else, but we were not sure how to do it or what we what we really wanted, in fact. Uh, we, uh, ever since we started in 2007, uh, we did uh, our very first activity when we opened the centre. We have like five exhibitions, we opened this big space. And um, our first activity was the Lev Festival. This is a festival in um, electronics and uh, electronic music and visuals. And um, now it's a very well positioned festival in the circuit, I believe. I don't know if you've heard about it, but um, um, that also gave us a hint uh, of uh, what we could, uh, which could be our resources in order to implement a sound lab. Also, yeah, of course, sound lab, uh, sound was present in every single area of, the, of Laboral. We produced uh, sound pieces for exhibitions. We had uh, an educational program in which we had included uh, specific uh, workshops uh, in programming towards uh, sound uh, experimentation. 
Uh, also, we had some specific programs when uh, Eric Berger was the uh, curator of Laboral, and he started a, a program called the Sound Cube, where we had um, uh, set specific uh, uh, sound pieces. We also uh, had concerts, uh, and we brought, we were able to bring in a lot of people because Asturias, uh, Danny will tell you later, but Asturias is a territory in which music, not sound, I would say sound art in particular, uh, in general, but music is a very uh, extended uh, practice. Yes, uh, what happens in Asturias is that there is a big tradition of, let's say, experimental music or, uh, I don't know, punk music or hardcore music or noise music or wave pop music or something like that. But what, what happens there, we don't know why, is that artists uh, never go farther or, or never change their, their way from releasing records and doing shows to doing installation or doing radiophonic pieces or, or writing about sound. They, by any reason, uh, in Asturias, there is a big tradition. They really know what's going on uh, with sound. But artist that doesn't cross the line of it seems like there's a big community very well very much interested in in music but uh they're very interested in like sometimes we realize they're very interested in exhibiting they're very interested in performing but uh we want them to go further we want them to try something else to try something dif different so uh that gave us also another hint uh when we were implementing the lab so I was uh, referring to Plataforma Cero. Yeah, this is a, yeah, a platform that's a centro de producción. So it's a production center. It's a research production and educational center within Laboral. And we provide resources for the community, for the artists. And um, it uh, has uh, different uh, equipment, as I said, the Fab Lab, and it has a visual lab with uh, different equipment towards uh, visuals. And um, we also have spaces, we have a residence for artists, we have people coming in, and we wanted to implement that um, also. How, how could we put that all together with a sound lab? So. Um, we had some, uh, from the beginning, we also had this uh, research group uh, from the territory, these uh, artists from Asturias. They were working mainly in phonography. Am I saying that right? Phonography yeah. yes. in English? I think so. Landscape, sound? Soundscapes, okay. uh, phonography. Soundscape, yes. okay. So they were working mainly in that, but just that. Uh, and they wanted, they claimed a space within Laboral to exhibit or to show their, the results of the of their research, and um, we thought it was uh, it was fine, and we could give them give them the space, but also that was that was not really what we wanted. We wanted uh, yeah. something different. Yeah, no? for Laboral, I think it, it it didn't have sense to do an exhibition space about sound uh, because we we were worried about if how we can mix uh, this, this sound work with a digital fabrication laboratory, for example, or with the, the, the audiovisual mm -hmm. laboratory. Practices. So mm -hmm. it, it has no sense for, for us to do a, just, to showcase, just a uh, listening room, mm -hmm. or I don't know how, how to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted something really different that we can explore uh, things we really like at the mm -hmm. moment, like, uh, I don't know some generative music or stuff, or some sound uh, data stuff, uh, mm -hmm. data sonification stuff, or anything we, we, we think we fit in mm -hmm. with what the other departments do in Laboral. So. Okay, so yeah, we were at the moment just uh, reflecting a little bit and thinking that uh, what we needed. So um, when we thought we had to to find the right profile, so someone that really understand that really understood the philosophy of the of the center, we thought of someone who had two uh, different uh, profiles. On one hand side, the technological um, knowledge 
or the uh, uh, more of a technical knowledge, but also an artistic knowledge of how to combine both things and work together with artists. Someone who would uh, know the um, the scene, the the scene around us, the territory. Uh, someone who would uh, be able to promote and uh, motivate other artists uh, close to us to cre create that community. And then also we needed someone else uh, in order to um, assist uh, this person and also create some kind of an archive or some documentation space uh, and, and provide information so everyone could uh, learn more. And um, well, we found Danny who was uh, from Asturias and he was, uh, he was ready to do it. He submitted a project and, and we uh, found that we liked it. And one other thing is that uh, Bjorn was referring to this huge, pla uh, huge place in, in Asturias called La Boral, where 14,000 square meters uh, center. And uh, we do have a lot of space, but where should we base our sound lab? It was difficult. It's uh, huge rooms, 2,000 square meter uh, rooms with huge uh, ceilings, like 10, 12, 15 meter ceilings. Sound? Uh, how is that going to work? Yeah, uh, <laughs> all in laboral sounds really awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, horrible. So sometimes <laughs> it's cool if you want to use that, but some artists want to sound good. So, so, so <laughs> we had a really big problem. <laughs> so we approach Danny and we say, "Well, we want to we want to build a sound lab." He's like, "What? At Laboral? Come on, guys, you're crazy." <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> so uh, we found a storage room. Uh, we found a storage room that was uh, 120 square meters uh, with uh, low ceilings, and then you will see the floor plan, and that's where we uh, thought we could put our base of operations. Though um, he was saying, well, you can have a sound lab, but you know, sound doesn't refer to space. In fact, we can work with space and sound. So why don't we work on that? Yeah, yeah, we, um, we found a space that we like to call our headquarters, our bed, to sleep when we are tired, <laughs> but... Uh, or, or to work sound with the artists. Always, <laughs> yes, uh, the laboral sound lab always want to invade uh, all laboral spaces. We always demand to do things in the other spaces because to work with sound always in the same space is like of, uh, it's not fun. kind of boring. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and then we needed um, some infrastructure. So uh, we needed to do some changes in this storage uh, room and we also, we had very little money to 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 get some equipment, so we had to search for technological partners. Uh, this is the space at the moment. This is the headquarters. Uh, he doesn't like that I say this is the sound lab. The sound lab is back two, <laughs> it's everywhere. But uh, yeah. this is how, if, if you look to the image um, below, that's how it looked uh, uh, before. If you so see the ceilings uh, at, the, at the top, yeah. That's uh, really that makes really a special sound uh, because if we if we put uh, acoustic panels in one of the failings, we change all the sound of the room. Uh, and he was also thinking of how to make it. Yes, uh, uh, before movable? if you see this a small picture, it was uh, even impossible to talk there more than five minutes. Because yeah. the, the 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 feeling in the ears was was really crazy. Mm. The river was extremely long. Uh, we don't really know why, but this sailing, this this nine nine sailings at the at the top, made a really special and crazy sound. So we we didn't want to lose this. Uh, <laughs> he so, didn't. So <laughs> so we try it to be like uh, like. Like the IRCAM, but in really uh, low-fi uh, aesthetics. Low-fi, low-cost. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so we invent that we can put the acoustic panels with Velcro, so the, the artist is free to change all the acoustic panels on the room. Uh, so he, you can make some crazy sounds just 
removing the panels from one ceiling. It, it starts to, to bounce and it's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so yeah, that's the center. That small spot with the blue is the sound lab, uh, 140 square meters. That, uh, yeah, we have some archive and documentation uh, space here at the entrance with a triangle, kind of triangle um, uh, figure, and then the, the lab. That's it, the tech room, yeah. And, okay, yeah, this is the my part, budget. So, um, this is what we had. This is where we started. We had some little money for <coughs> space construction works. We had some little money for equipment investment. I said, this is what you have. Let's see what you can do with it. Uh, we had some uh, uh, money for staff. And that doesn't, of course, include the rest of the people that work at Laboral that, uh, of course, fit in the, the every single programming that comes from and emerges from the sound lab. And of course, well, we have a uh, very, very short money for activities, as you see. And of course, yeah, we need we need the cleaning and everything expenses like that. Uh, for example, the space construction works. It includes, for example, a wall we have to build to separate the control room from the production room. Uh, the carpet to control the sound. A bit a more, bit. <laughs> and the lights, for example. <laughs> and the equipment includes the acoustic panels and the speakers. Like uh, we, we have, a, uh, maybe you know, it's this kind of Genelec monitors and, and two really big uh, subwoofers. <laughs> and a computer. Yes, and uh, computer <laughs> and stuff. Sound car, you know. Okay, uh, so what could, what could we do with that? Um, so we found some uh, technological partners. I'll show you the logos after. This is uh, what they always like. Um, and also um, we thought, of course, uh, starting a um, sound lab, we needed to find uh, some partnerships for, as my other colleague from previously said, uh, for co-productions and and yeah, of course I mentioned some of them, like Avatar in Quebec, which are really, really active and help us a lot. And uh, our partners from Ars Electronica, in which uh, who with uh, we do a lot of uh, things also. Uh, a center from uh, Catalonia, Lopati, and uh, where Danny is based now in Montpellier. And of course the festival that we co-produce, the festival. And then we found some uh, private uh, support. Well, you want to say I think it's good something? to say that some of, some of these partners are not into the sound world. For example, the CDM Montpellier is the Dramatical National Center of Montpellier. They, they are a theater. They don't work with sound. Well, well they, they work they with do, sound, but, um, but different. That, okay. Uh, Lopati is a small art center in Catalonia that is not from, is n they are not, they don't have any expertise in, in sound. Mm -hmm. But that's part of our mm -hmm. philosophy, maybe. Mm -hmm. That if we work with a digital fabrication laboratory, we can work with a theater. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is. Okay, so yeah, private corporations, that's um, more complicated, especially in, in Spain, but we, do, we did find a, a collaboration with Yamaha, uh, for example. Uh, and um, yeah, of course, uh, ever since we started the lab, we thought of, um, of how we could create some kind of like a network, something that we thought it was absolutely necessary for us. But um, yeah, that started to be a thought, then started to be like a document and it ended up like a detailed project description that we uh, submitted to the European Union. And that uh, is actually a network that, is, uh, that has funding from the European Union, which is the European Network for Contemporary Audiovisual Creation. And and yeah, another strategy, since we had that little um, 
uh, range of action uh, was how we could feed from uh, the rest of the activity that was uh, in Laboral. So uh, the rest of the departments work also in the same way. We work, we have a line of action, we have a programming strategy, and that has a reflection in research, production, education, and exhibition or dissemination program, presentations, whatever. And also, uh, Danny was very um, touched by the possibility of working with other labs, like working with a fab lab. We are a low-fi and we are a low-cost uh, project, but uh, he had the possibility of working with a fab lab in certain uh, ways. For example, to say an example that we can do with a fab lab, uh, we can choose if we want to buy a Tetramic, this kind of ambisonic microphones, but 1,000 euros, or, but we can do it at the, at the Fab Lab by 70 euros. We, well, you we, can do it. Well, well, <laughs> we, we do the software to the code, we, we build the pieces to put it in the right, in the right uh, sense or the right direction. So uh, we do this uh, hemispherical speakers. Uh, so we, we try to do things that that later will be useful for the for the art center. If we do it by 70 euros, it's better than buy it but by 500 euros. I agree. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, uh, well, actually, uh, this proves to be very practical because, of course, you have to kn have the knowledge and the people that can experiment and try that and have the will to build it. But, uh, for example, we have a resident coming from Avatar this year that needs that type of technolo uh, technology yes. to build this. Uh, she wanted to buy these microphones, but uh, Danny was saying, well, we've been experimenting and researching, um, and we could, let's try with this, no? And also with Mark Fell, uh, with Mark Fell installation during yes. the festival, uh, you built uh, the... Yes, uh, he needs some, some small pieces to to, to hold, a, to hold a, a cord, we just did it at the, at the Fab Lab. Yeah, well, that's uh, when, when you need things, you, 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 know, you know, you get creative. And if you have the creative people, you do it. So, yeah, we, we um, used a lot. And we, we think that it's a good thing that we put together these labs and put them together to work. Uh, and uh, I have uh, from Berlin, I have the people like in Winter Lab uh, this year, I have the Music Maker Festival people coming over. So to see how to um, make them uh, work together more and more. So let's see. And then, uh, yeah, partnership with the festival, because we have a lot of people coming in, and yeah, it's a way of uh, um, yeah, extending the voice of this is a sound lab come in and, you know. And, and so uh, uh, we started also a program there. Yes, for example, for the Left festival, one of our first action, we do a radio rave. <laughs> yeah, Bjorn was uh, uh, talking about that. It, at six in the morning, in the in the parking so all the cars uh, that the audience of the festival uh, they they tune the fm radio and we were broadcasting a show so it ended up into a big pa system uh, of a lot of cars uh, but it was a radio show it was it was our first radio show yes no yes that rave okay so um okay and here again figures numbers uh, so we managed to finance the 25% of our equipment. Um, we did find um, the possibility of increasing our activities uh, budget and we managed to double it with uh, co-productions. And yeah, we, um, though uh, we don't have much income from uh, workshops, but we did uh, try to get Danny to uh, do some workshops and bring people in and get some mm. money and reinvest it in materials for research? Yes, uh, because uh, this uh, at Laboral, the, the one of the good things of having some technical stuff mm -hmm. is that you can do a workshop without extra cost. Mm -hmm. uh, if I know how to deal with pure, da pure data, for example, I teach people how to use pure data uh -huh. with no extra cost. 
Of course. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, overall, our budget was around 100,000 euros, that, not that much. But uh, hopefully in the following three years, until September 2017, we'll have that, plus what we managed to get from the European Union, from the um, European Network for Contemporary Visual Creation uh, project. And these are our partners. Uh, they like that. <laughs> and uh, to tell you a little bit about uh, NCAC, uh, we're going to do a big open call. This is you see all of our all of the partners there. So we are the leaders. But then we have uh, Ash Teash uh, in Montpellier. We have Ars Electronica. We have La Unique. We have Resonate in Belgrade. We have Disc CTM in Berlin. And uh, then we have other four non-European partners. We have our Avatar. These guys, they are very cool in Quebec. We have Mapping Festival, Electra um, in Montreal and Mutec in Mexico. And uh, we, as you see, um, those are very different uh, type of uh, partners. We are on one hand side research production exhibition centers or contemporary art centers. And we have festivals and uh, and different uh, orientation of festivals resonate is a, a festival that is very uh, the their focus is in education and dissemination practices and other are more into performances and so the different roles of the of the partners are we intend to this uh, to make this big open call that will be will be launching hopefully the 15th of uh, of uh, June, and uh, we will have uh, this. Is, this will be an open call for five different residences, production research and production residences in five different venues of the network, and then the um, work or the outcome will be displayed and disseminated through the festival partners. And then, of course, we will have uh, an educational program. You can see the like the resume and the summary of the activities here and I'll let you have the information later just in case and so yeah I hope this will uh, help the sound lab, sound lab grow a little bit. Uh, this is a part that I always like to show the impact in media my uh, board of members always like it this is uh, the um, audiences that we were able to reach with our programming with our very little money um, and um, this is the yeah visitors, users in our workshops, people coming from our re to the residences, to our concerts. Uh, not bad, huh? <laughs> and then yeah, this is what we've done until now: uh, exhibitions, works, installations we've produced, residences. Uh, all the exhibitions are, are first produced by, by us. It's yeah. not that we do an exhibition. We do the residence. Yeah, we, pr we produce we it. We produce and we do the exhibition. We exhibit it. And sometimes we even show it somewhere else. Yeah, um, like this is your part. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, to talk a bit about what we do, I would like to... Just, just to highlight something. Yes, 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 yes. Because I don't know how we're with time. We're, we're really short on time. Okay, okay. go ahead. Uh, the first, uh, the Rodrigo Garcia one is an installation uh, made by a theater director, not by a so-called sound, sound artist. Mm -hmm. uh, he did, uh, I, I said him to do some, something with sound in space. I say, hey, do you know things about the space because of the string of the, you know, the stage in the theater? Um, he ended up with seven helmets seven motorcycle helmets that you had to hide, hit, hit, hit you, <laughs> to change the sound by some machine listening techniques and stuff like, like that. So he ended up with two sound installations. One when you wear the helmet, and the other when you are out and you see people hitting, hitting her, her, her head. Their head. And pock, and yeah. doing pock, pock, pock. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, for example, the Julia Drowning ra radio exhibition. It was 25 artists from all over the world. That includes uh, pff, I don't remember Felix Cubin, uh, Francisco Lopez, uh, Pipe Stafford. Uh, I don't know. 
but it was uh, a radio exhibition from an ice cream dispenser, an yeah. ice cream vintage uh, maker. That we 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 went to the one of the. We went to we went downtown in yes, the city. Yes, uh, we we, we start to sell so. ice creams that, uh, but broadcasting like three hours of 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 sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and people were, were there, like, eating ice cream and tuning the, our radio. Mm -hmm. It was good. Um, for example, to talk about radio, we did this exhibition at Ars Electronica. Spectrum, is anybody there? With 14, I think, radio pieces. Uh, all of them produced? All of them produced by us. Part of the yes. residence. And it was again in a parking. We do the radio exhibition in a parking, people... Uh, there were some, some cars, cars and, yeah, and do it. And tune the radio. Uh, nothing else, because I can... Well, the <laughs> Nicolas Bernier piece. That yeah. we, maybe we can see a picture. I don't know. Uh, where is it? Uh, right here. Yeah, yeah it's the, not very well. Very good. Uh, it's difficult to explain. But do you know this piece by Nicolas Bernier that is now touring in Europe? It's uh, 100 acrylic panels. Yeah, and it's about qu quantum sound. Mm -hmm. He invented like a trick about uh, points and waves. You know this quantum stuff. <laughs> well, he prototyped it at uh, Laura, yes. and he's uh, he's now uh, showcasing it uh, in every single festival, yes. not only in Europe but also in Asia and and everywhere. It's a good one. I, I think okay. Okay. We're, f we're finished. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks.